you know, looking back when I was a kid, man, it really, it really never dawned on me. I was just so into playing, you know, I love to play basketball. I love to play baseball. I love to play football. Those were the three biggies back when I came through. Um, uh, you know, and it never really dawned on me that I wanted to be a coach. I, it, I don't remember thinking that way, you know, I watched him be successful. He's won a God, he's won so many games. I think his, I think my daddy's uh, JV record at Midway High School was something I figured it up. I think it was like 82 and nine uh, with like nine conference championships in a row. Then I think his varsity record was like 52 and 27. But, it, you know, as a, but as a kid, I don't, I, ne- I don't ever really remember thinking I want to be a coach. I just, I don't, I don't know. I was just, I think I was so wrapped up into playing, you know, back then, when I was a kid like that, you know, we didn't we didn't sit around on the iPads and we didn't sit around on the phones. We 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 were out in the in the yard where you were raised, where we, you and I were born and raised. That we were playing ball. We were we were hitting balls and uh, throwing footballs and shooting baskets, and that that's what we did until we got old enough to go to work. Um, but I don't ever remember thinking that as a kid. But I tell you what, man, when I got old enough to uh, realize that some of my best memories in the world are from come from the sidelines so you know I, I touched on you know your dad my uncle Joe Matthews being a coach um and to me I, I've said this to a lot of people he's one of the best sports minds I've ever known he knows he knows the game he knows basketball he knows baseball he knows football and then I, I've, I've sat there and watched games with him you know just randomly and he's or, or watched old tapes and he's flipping back through it I mean he can just he can dissect everything you know, what did he teach you? What were some of the more important things he taught you about coaching and about the game and about, you know, teaching it, you know, about scouting it, that kind of thing? Yeah. Um, you know, when I first started coaching with him and I decided I was going to actually be a member of his staff, he, um, one of the first things he'd done, you know, he, um, he, he put a responsibility on all of us coaches, you know, we, we graded our tapes after every game, it, you know, we had, to, we had to grade our tapes and grade our positions. You know, I played quarterback, so I coached quarterbacks and running backs. So it was my job, and it was my opportunity to grade those guys and see how they done. But one of the, I tell you, man, one of the and this is weird with me coaching quarterbacks and running backs. One of the most important things Daddy ever done for me as a head coach was he explained to me and he taught me how to coach the offensive line. And I never coached the offensive line. But by understanding what that offensive line was doing, it allowed me to coach my guys better at what they were supposed to do. So what they could expect, because it all starts on that front line. Certainly. That's where it all starts, down in those trenches. Yep. Those, that center, those two guards, those tackles, and that tight end, that's where the play starts. If that blows up, nothing happens. Right. So by understanding what they were doing up front, which is what Daddy taught me, um, that allowed me, in my opinion, to be a better coach for those quarterbacks and that fullback and that, and that tailback, I would say, was probably one of the best things he'd done for me. And just seeing how much he loved it and just seeing how much time he put into it. I mean, it was, I mean, it was every night at home. It was get, watching film. You know, we'd eat, watch film Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Friday we played um, – Saturday, he would – back then, man, you ride up down the road, whoever you were going to play the next week, you had to meet that coach and exchange those tapes because, you know, we would exchange two uh, tapes with coaches so we we could better prepare for a better game for everybody, you know. And then on Sunday, I remember we would – you know, he would go to church, and then after after church he would come home and uh, he would eat a bite, and, and then quickly he would get out to the schoolhouse maybe about 1 o'clock, and we wouldn't see him till 7, 8, 9 o'clock that night. I mean, he was in it to win it, and you know that's why he was that's why he was so successful. But to answer your question, him teaching me how what was going on on that offensive line allowed me to be a better football coach. Yeah, well, you know the games are won in the trenches. More than nine sure. times out of ten, the games are won in one of the trenches. Absolutely. Uh, so you know, you talk about coaching at the high school level, which is awesome, but you've also had the opportunity to take um, a step down coach at the middle school level which you what you you know done here the past few years um what what is the biggest difference between those two levels you know in those age groups 
Yeah, that's a good question. I'll tell you, man, when I went when I went down to middle school, I was, you know, if I'm being, I'm gonna be honest with you, I was thinking to myself, man, this is gonna be elementary. This is gonna be <laughs> some two-hand tag stuff. That's what I was thinking to myself, because I'm so used to seeing these boys that's, you know, you know how it is on Friday nights and you know, on Friday night lights, you can get hurt on that football field. So I was thinking, well, this ain't gonna be nothing. I ain't gonna be satisfied. I don't know if I'm gonna enjoy this. But I'm gonna tell you what, Kagan, I was extremely um, I mean, I was impressed, man. I tell you, a middle school football field ain't nowhere to be playing around at. You get hurt, you know. I oh, yeah. thought, the, I thought, you know, there are. I have witnessed some vicious hits, and I'll tell you another thing about middle school. Those kids are eager, you know. The ones we coached in high school were eager back in those days. Those kids would run through a brick wall for my daddy and me and all of us coaches, your daddy and all of us. But those kids in middle school, those kids are, they got open ears and closed mouths a lot of time. You know, you hear all this talk about middle school kids being mouthy and this and that and the other in the classroom and stuff. But it seems like from my experience, when they step on that football field, their, their, their mouths are closed and their ears are open and they're ready to do whatever you ask them to do. You know, we've won some big games, won some big games when you were playing us, you know, one of the best. One of my best memories is that overtime game we won in, I believe it was at Hopton whenever you were in eighth grade. I believe. You remember that? Oh, yeah. Like, you remember forget. that game? We, we were, I think, what, was it Union that game we were playing that night? We're, it you was said, the, you said it, you didn't know a human being could jump that high? Yeah, it was, uh, it was the, the semifinals of the conference. Right. We had a little tournament back then. And yeah. uh, I, we, we punched in the go-ahead score. I mean, it was like a, a minute left or something like that. And, I, I mean, you – I mean, just straight vertical, just jumped up high. Your legs looked like they were going to go above your head, you know. <laughs> yeah, you told me. You said, I know a I know human being could jump that high. Yeah, I was, that was I, awesome. Back, uh, back then, I was calling the plays that year. And, man, it was – I tell you what, buddy, bro, if you if you could have fried that, I'd have eat it, man. When it, we, we slipped down the end zone tonight. But middle school has been – um. It's satisfying, man. I mean, coming from a varsity coach, taking a couple of years off, going back down to the middle school, I thought I was going to be disappointed. It was very satisfying, very satisfying. And I'll tell you something else about middle school. Um, I like the fact that it's, you know, it's a short season, play about six games. Um, we start practice when school comes back. So there's there's so much – the season is so much more condensed than the high school. You know, I enjoyed that part of it too. But, you know, it was – it's it's rough out there on that middle school football field. You can get hurt for sure. So I was not let down at all. I was very well pleased with coaching it. How do you motivate young kids? And not necessarily at the middle school level, but the high school level too. I mean, you know, they're – they're um you know like you said they're good kids but at the same time you're still young you think you know everything that kind of thing you know at, at both levels how, how do you find a way to get to get to them to motivate them well they they got to know what's they got to know what they can do you know they need to walk by and they need to see these trophies in these trophy cases from where from where some of you boys put in them trophy cases we got to be able to tell them said hey this is tradition Last year's team won six games. Last year's team won five games. Or at the varsity level, hey, last year we were 10 and three. This year we're trying to go to, you're trying to go to 13, uh, 15 and 0. We want to win that state championship. We're edging closer. You got to continue, you, you know, you got you to present them with the successes you've had and you got to get out there and just, and just push them as best you can and just let them know, hey, it's all about y'all. You know, I can, I can coach as hard as I want to coach, but you know, man, Kagan, I've coached, I don't know, maybe 16, 17 years. You know, as far as coaching, I've never thrown a touchdown pass. I've never made a tackle. You can't do it from the sidelines. You just got to let them boys know, say, hey, if you want to be great, you got to be great. You got to give it your all and you got to get your tail out there and you got to you got to get busy. And you can't be expecting nobody to do your job. You know your job right here between this A and B gap or whatever gap or whatever your job is, that's your job. And you got to trust these other men around you. And once you get everybody trusting each other and on the same page, that's when you can play some football. Can you, can you pinpoint a certain moment in your coaching career when you're, you know, you, you talked about having the bug. Can you pinpoint one moment where you're like, this is, this is pretty neat. This is like, this is cool. This is, I, I, I'm pretty, pretty lucky to get to experience this. Is there one single moment where you look back and you say it all kind of changed? 
Uh, well, I'll tell you the biggest, the biggest highlight of my coaching career was, um, I can't remember what year it was. I think it might have been maybe 2002. I can't remember. But anyway, <clears throat> it was me, daddy, your daddy was coaching. They was, um, I can't remember. We had several coaches on the staff that year, but we were pretty good. Midway was pretty good. I think we were like nine and oh, Hobson was nine and oh, and we went down to Hobson the last game of the year. It was always rivalry week. We went down there and they messed around and beat us. They got the they got the uh, they got the conference championship that night, and man, it was just awful. These kids were just I mean, it was it was big time. They were, these kids were down. They were severely down, and we had looked at what we thought might be projected in the playoffs. And Daddy had told him, said, "Hey, Lord works in a mysterious way." He said, "We just may if we if we win and they win three weeks from now, we'll be back down here at this same place where our hearts are so broke." Three weeks later, we went back down there for the third round of playoffs. And I remember when we got there at 5.30, the seats were already taken. The stadium was already full. You know, small 1A town football. It was it was huge. And we uh, we dog fought all night long, back and forth, back and forth. That's uh, <clears throat> that's when my buddy, my, my good friend, who I respect so much, Coach Al Britt, was out at Hobson. We got the world. Uh, respect him a ton. Love Coach Al Britt. And it was him and Daddy duking it out that night, and, and old Brandon Killett, which was our uh, the, the old, uh, tailback that year, to what they called him the Raid uh, Killett Express. Him and franchise man in the fourth quarter, them boys just midway just came alive in the fourth quarter, and we pulled away. I can't remember the score. I want to say 35, 21 or something, but we got him that night for the third round. That was the highlight of my coaching career. And before we left home that night to get on the bus, I told Daddy, I'll never forget it. I said, Daddy. It'll never be any bigger than it's going to be tonight. And that was the highlight of my coaching career. And your daddy was part of it. Yeah. Oh, I, and I've heard. Beautiful. I've, I've heard that story so many times. And Ooh. I get chills just thinking about it. I get cold chills just thinking about that. night. I can see it right now how it was when that scoreboard, when that, when that clock finally ticked to zero and we had that thing. I'll never forget the feeling I had. And uh, it was, uh, you know, WRL, our, our, uh, our, our local TV, it was the game of the week, right? You know, for those yeah. that are listening that know Football Friday, you know, the, yeah, the, the weekly, you know, television show about all the high school football in the state, you know, that's a huge deal. Well, that was the game oh, of the week. Big, man. It was, it, was, it was the biggest game in town for sure. It was huge. And I, uh, I'm just so thankful I was able to be a part of it. And I, I think about it almost, honestly, I think about it almost every day. Because I'll tell you, man, my, my, my senior year, I took my shoulder pads off for the last time at Hobson in the third round. They got us. I and they went on to win a state championship, off. right? They won the state championship that year. Yep. They beat us. We, we were ahead of them at halftime, and then they came back and got us in the second half. They, they, then they pretty much cakewalked all the way to the, um, to the state championship. Congratulations to them guys. Got a lot of good friends from that team um, and Coach Britt, too. Um, but – so then, you know, it just broke my heart. And I think about that about every day. But that night when I was coaching and we, we got them in the third round, that sort of that sort of took a little bit of the bitterness out of my throat for them boys. For Hobson. <laughs> we got them back. But um, a lot of respect for them guys. Don't get me wrong, you know, but it's just all it's all in fun. But um, but that, that's the highlight of my career at Hobson that night in the third round when I was coaching. When I seen Brandon Killett, who I was coaching, he hit that hole, and he when he hit it, he 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 he, he had such great vision, and when he hit it, bounced back left, and when he, and when he said it, he was gone. And you know, of course, I can't coach the God given talent that Brandon Killett had, but I had to show him where he needed to be and what he needed to do. So, just watching that was just just amazing. If I could bottle that up, it'd all be millionaires. <laughs> but yeah, and so you know the. The heartbreak years before made it that much sweeter, didn't it? Uh, it absolutely, and it was actually the same year. That was at the end of the year when they beat us, and then three weeks later we went back over there again for the third round of the playoffs. Mm -hmm. So it was the same year. Yeah, they beat us game ten, and then we were nine and zero, oh, and I think they were. And then game thirteen, we went back over there, and that's when we, that's when we, uh, that's when we came out successful, but. It, man, it was awesome. God, it was awesome. I'll never forget it. And do you uh, – I remember – I've always heard, you know, you had to have a police escort to get into that game, right? 
Isn't, isn't that correct? Yeah, I, man, I'll never forget. We were in the locker room that night, and it's up, you know where it's at. You got to come out of the field and go up through where all the rocks is, you know, the rock driveway, and go up there into like the schoolhouse. Because, you know, a lot of these small schools, the locker room is up in as part of the school. So, mm-hmm. man, when we come out of there that night for um, to take the field for the game, you couldn't even get to the game. It was it was just like a it was like a mosh pit. Is that what you call it? A mosh pit. Sure, yeah. And it, the, the police had to come down there and sort of it was like walking through a turkey house. If you've ever walked through a turkey house, how the turkey <laughs> spread when you walk. You could we couldn't even get to the field, man. It was so packed. I mean, I think I don't remember exactly. I want to say the gate that night was like over twenty thousand dollars. This is one A football. It's in, in Newton Grove. So it was huge. 